Hi, it's Kathy Forstall coming back to you with the third in my series on Fifty Shades of Grey. And this one is on domestic abuse. And we had mentioned in the last video that um, in the Fifty Shades of Grey, Christian is a abuser and find, coming to find out he had been abused, which is very common. And we need to have compassion on people like that. And we need to hope that they can pull themselves out of that sin and get healed. But we are not God, so we can't do that for them. And the last thing we want to do is go into the abuse with them. That is the worst thing you could possibly do. And I want to give you some um, facts about that from some scholars that have actually studied Fifty Shades of Grey. I have one article that was written by three women. All three of them read the whole series and analyzed it and studied it very well. And they want to share their ideas about how it ties into um, intimate part, in, intimate partner violence, which is also known as IPV. I'm going to read to you about that. Um, Fifty Shades of Grey is clearly promoting a codependent relationship where the woman is the enabler and because of this she gains power and in the end becomes his savior. But that's the farthest thing from the truth in abusive and addictive relationships. So this article is from the Journal of Women's Health. It's written by Annie, Amy, I'm sorry, Amy Bonomi, PhD, Lauren Altenberger, BS, and Nicole Walton, MSW1. And they start by saying that inter-intimate, inter tongue twister there, <laughs> intimate partner violence, IPV, I'm just going to go with that, affects between 25 and 44 percent of women and significantly, significantly compromises their physical and mental health. Despite the high prevalence of IPV and adverse health impacts, underlying societal conditions create the context for such violence to occur, including the normalization and romanticizing of violence in popular culture. So, when they did their an analysis of Fifty Shades of Grey, this was the results they came up with. Emotional abuse is present in nearly every interaction, including stalking, intimidation, and isolation. Sexual violence is pervasive, including using alcohol to compromise Anastasia's consent, as well as intimidation. Christian initiates sexual encounters when genuinely angry, dismisses Anastasia's request for boundaries, and threatens her. Anastasia experiences reactions typical of abused women, including constant perceived threat, altered identity, and stressful managing. Uh, Anastasia becomes disempowered and entrapped in the relationship as her behaviors become me mechani mechanized in response to Christian's abuse. So their conclusions is, our analysis identified patterns in Fifty Shades that reflect pervasive intimate partner violence, one of the biggest problems of our time. Further, our analysis adds to the growing body of literature, noting dangerous violence standards being perpetrated in popular culture. And that I want to address by telling you, I'm grabbing something back here, but telling you about a documentary that you really should watch and it's called Half the Sky if you haven't seen it yet. It's not, it's about um, all kinds of violence against women, but it's about rape cultures in a lot of other countries and I was quite shocked by it because it's not just about sex trafficking, it's about how countries get so caught up in a rape culture because it's so common that women just kind of almost accept it and it just becomes part of the norm because they feel powerless against it and and the even the legal system doesn't help them and it's just an amazing um, video and we need to realize that by letting this kind of thing into our country we are putting ourselves in um, in a place where we could end up being a rape culture. I've already heard one story about a college girl who was raped and beaten by a man who said he was acting out the Fifty Shades of Grey, so that's already happened, and I'm sure it's going to happen much more, and we won't even hear about all that's happened. 
but we were talking about erotica the last time too and I wanted read and those women that said it changed their life forever for the good well I want to read you another story from pulling back the shades the book we talked about earlier and um, how this ruined someone's life she says I am single and erotica ruined my life I have been, oh, this is, I'm sorry, first I want to tell you who this girl is. She was a young missionary and Christian leader, so she was going to other countries, feeding the poor, doing wonderful things. She was serving in her church, and she was, and she was keeping herself pure, but she was reading erotica, and she started really young, so this is an eye-opener. I am single, and erotica ruined my life. I have been addicted to, for 10 years, and I am only 25. No one knows my struggle. No one knows that I have lived in an isolated life because I have found more solace in fantasies aroused in my mind by erotica than in real relationships. Erotica seems harmless because it just it's just words on a page, but it brands your mind, creates false expectations for future relationships. I can't even maintain real relationships because I feel like a shallow pretender, hiding one of the biggest parts of my life. Erotica perpetrated my need for meeting people online because I didn't know how to develop and maintain relationships with people outside of the screen. Eventually, I decided to take my online relationships into reality. Many of the stories I read portrayed rape or power struggle situations as exciting. A no didn't always mean no because in the end, the girl always seemed to end up just fine. So when I met one of my first guys offline, I was thrust ever too quickly into a scenario I had read about, but unlike the stories, it didn't end up just fine. My no didn't mean no, and I was sexually abused by a man who did the same things to me that I had read about in those erotic stories. But in my story, there wasn't a happy ending. Ever since then, I have carried the weight of shame and guilt for putting myself into the situation six years ago. Erotica makes it seem normal for us to be used and abused, but that's not normal. So that just goes to show how this can become a major problem for our society. And she's she was 15, that's a child, but this will affect children even younger than that. And I'm not going to get into that on this video because um, that is a whole video in itself. But I do want to leave you with one. Um, I got to go back to it. One other comment that someone made in an article that it's not to bring condemnation on anyone who has read these books, and I don't want to do that in any of these videos. I just want to make you think about this and realize how serious this really is. And so, um, oh, actually it's here. I'm sorry, I'm looking in the wrong place. So I want to read you this last thing and just, just think about this. And, you know, remember, I love you guys, all of you. I don't care if you're Christian, not Christian, whatever. Um, and I will talk, I'll address that later too, because I want to talk to the Christians about if they've had problems with this, how they can get out of it and how they can get help. And um, even, and hopefully, if you're not a Christian, then you're listening to this from the intellectual level. But here's the last thing that I want to read to you. Anyone who works with victims of domestic and sexual assault will tell you that just because someone permits something to happen or doesn't extricate themselves from the situation doesn't mean it isn't, in fact, abuse. Only when it comes to sex are people starting to make this argument. So that when they can, so that um, so that they can cling to their fetishes and justify their turn-ons. Those women who defend the book because they think it spiced up their sex life are being incredibly selfish and negligent, refusing to think about how this book could affect other women in different situations, as well as young and impressionable girls. And so again, this isn't to bring condemnation, but to bring awareness. And there's so much that I want to say, and I will continue on with this in the next video, and thank you for listening.